I know it's only been about 10 days, but I'm really excited to be here with you tonight. And um, I have a real fun technique we're going to do. It's called the spotlighting technique. So um, before we get started, I just want to tell you a little bit about the spotlighting technique. Um, it's using color to highlight an area in your card to kind of draw attention to it or spotlight it. And you can do this in a couple of ways. Tonight we're going to use designer series paper to do that. Um, you can also stamp images and make your own designer series paper and then um, spotlight um, a portion of what you design. So tonight we're going to work with designer series paper. I have, I think, four cards to show you, three that we're going to make. So hang with me through to the end and I'll show you a couple additional cards. Um, and I'm going to flip this camera over and we're going to get started. Okay, I want to um, just get a couple... Um, housekeeping things out of the way tonight. Um, the stamp set we are using and the designer series paper that we're going to use is from the Abigail Rose um, Suite or Bundle, Cottage Rose Bundle. Um, we're going to be using um, some of the stamps here for insides of the cards, but we're going to focus on this designer series paper, which is the um, Abigail Rose paper, and it comes in 12 by 12 sheets. And um, mine is almost used up, but I'm going to go ahead and bring it in here for you, um, just so you can see it and I can explain a little bit how we're going to use it. So this is the paper, and this is all I have left. I've been using it over and over, um, especially for the spotlighting technique and some other cards. Gorgeous paper, um, really um, neutral colors, crumb cake, um, early espresso, a soft suede, um, your blacks and grays. Um, when you do the spotlight technique, you um, want open images that you can color and um, add some interest to. So the ones that we're using, and this is all I have left, we are using this because this gives me nice big images and I'll show you how we're going to use it. Um, and then um, we're using this one also, but gorgeous papers that I want to show you here. Now, later in the, when we're all done, I'm going to show you a spotlight card um, that I did using this paper. So let's flip this over and let you just see what's on the back. You have like an old ledger, um, some leaves, um, open floral design that you could also use. I love the gray. And um, then you have some, uh, I believe it's petal pink um, stripes. So I'm gonna move all that out of the way and we are going to get started. So I'm gonna bring in the first card that I'm gonna show you. We're just gonna do it with a different greeting. So I'm using this paper and what I did is once you use, pick out your paper, you then want to find a matching piece with the image that you can cut out. Now, there's a couple ways you can cut it out. I, I will tell you for any um, circles that you see throughout the cards tonight, my go-to dies are the stylish shapes dies. I use them for everything, um, even for the banners for my... Um, sentiments. So with this, I used a piece of paper and then I matched it up and used um, the smallest circle. I believe it was one even smaller than this for this card. And I die cut it out. So let's just move it off to the side here. And I'm going to bring in our first card and show you. So let's bring this one in. And this is um, our card. I've done a lot of prep work ahead of time. And we are going to go ahead and start putting this together. 
because this is very vanilla, that's what I chose to use for all my cards. It's actually a color I don't use that often, but I the more I'm using it, the more I like it. So all of the measurements, um, I will tell you, um, will be um, right underneath this video. The link will take you there, and it will be there later tonight or first thing tomorrow morning. But I'm just using a, a regular size card, five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. So let's go ahead and we're going to fold this on our score line and just burnish it with our bone folder. Now I wanted to, um, two things, because my very vanilla isn't thick cardstock, I wanted to add some weight to this and make it feel uh, firmer. So I am matting everything in black and um, both on the inside and out. So I have my greeting for the inside and um, we are going to mat it to the basic black. But before I do that, I'm going to bring in my Cottage Rose stamp set. And I want to add a little something oops, to the corner of that. So we're going to mount this on a block. And I'm going to grab a big one here. And then we're going to ink the stamp up in the Memento, Tuxedo Black Memento ink. And we're just going to stamp that in the corner. Now, because this is um, a cling stamp, um, we don't need to have our piercing mat here. And I just want to angle this so that I get a partial image. So I'm going to go down, give it a good press, and come up. And we're going to leave it like that. I have no intention of coloring it, but I just like the way that that looks, especially mounted on the black. So let's go ahead and we're going to adhere that and um, put that to the inside. I'm not really sure where I got that little bit of black from, but let's hope it's not on my hands. I hope you're all having a good week. Um, I know this is not my normal time to be on, um, but over the past week and a half, I've been busy helping a family member that had some major surgery done and I've not been on. And so I'm just kind of getting back to things and I didn't want to wait until Friday um, to do another live. So I thought I'd hop on here tonight and, um, show you this technique. So let's go ahead. Now, um, the inside is four by five and a quarter, and then my vanilla layer is three and three quarters by five. So our inside is done. So let's go ahead now and show you what I did. So with this, I have my piece of paper. Um, again, uh, four and a quarter by five, and then three and three quarter, uh, four and a four by five and a quarter. And my designer series paper is three and three quarters by five. And what I did was when I was able to, um, wanted to match that up, I found what was going to match for me. And then I took the smallest circle for my um, stylish dies, or second smallest, I'm sorry, and I cut my circle out. So this is going to be my spotlight right here. So let's go ahead and um, we're gonna color this. So I chose, I have a bunch of Stampin' Blends here and I chose to um, use some uh, Calypso Corals and Daffodil Delights and um, I'm just going to come in here and try to color because it's, it's not so much about the coloring as it is the technique. So let's just um, add this here. And you can do pretty much whatever you want to do. So I'm just um, going to add this in here. Um, if you've watched me before, you know uh, I'm big on my using my Stampin' Blends and light-handedly. Um, I don't go back and forth like this with them because I find they pill the paper. 
and um, I don't like the look of that. And um, I also find that you, you don't need a heavy hand in using these. I try to go in one direction um, so that I don't get that, that look. I'm going to come back in with my coral here. And I'm going to do this in a dark. And then I like to use the um, highlighted marks that Stampin' Up! gives us for um, accent. And I just think it um, kind of gives it to you in the right places. And I don't have to figure out then where the light is going to shine and be. I'm just going to come in here and add a little bit more. And then I used my dark first this time. Um, you can use whichever one you choose to use first, either your dark or your light. And um, we're just going to go in and kind of blend these together. How many, if you're um, on with me, and um, new to my channel, I'm so happy you found me. And if you're uh, with me live, please leave me a comment and let me know where you're from. And I'd love to know if you've done the spotlight technique before and what you think of it. Okay. Just going to bring in a little bit here. And now we're going to do our larger flowers. And for this, um, I'm going to come in with my lavender. I'm going to use actually fresh freesia. And I'm going to go in this time with these flowers with my light first. And just going to go in and color those petals. And then I'm going to go back over. Um, the accent lines with the dark fresh freesia. Now, um, I've had a lot of questions in the past saying, don't you find that the blends run into colors? Um, they can, but there's ways to avoid that. Um, I don't find it as a problem. For one, if I'm stamping the image, I want to make sure that image is dry before I even um, begin using my blends. And if I'm in a hurry and I can't wait for it to dry, I grab my heat tool and um, put it on low and just hit it lightly with my heat tool and um, dry that ink. But if you're, um, then when you do start to color, I try hard, and that doesn't mean I always do, not to go right up to the edge. And what I mean by that is, and if you'll see me here as I get up to the orange, these are alcohol markers, so the ink spreads. So I go up um, almost to it and see how far that ink is going to spread out. And then I'll just very lightly go in with the tip if I need to for more coverage. And that's kind of what's worked for me here in the in the past. Um, I love the Stampin' Blends, but I think um, that you kind of develop some um, tips and tricks for using them. And you'll just end up uh, learning the more you use them what works for you. So don't get discouraged if you're new to using them. Um, they color beautifully and um, add so much to your images. Oh. Now this image did not have any leaves or any green to it. Um, it's mostly just the uh, floral. Now I'm going to come back in. Well, actually we do have one... Let's see what this is. If I bring this in, this is going to be here. Is that a leaf? 
Nope, that's part of the flower. So let's go ahead and color that in. Okay, now I'm going to go in with my dark um, fresh freesia and just add some accent. Again, I try to stay pretty light handed. Now, um, I just want to remind all of you if you um, that tonight ends the weekly specials that Stampin' Up! has been having during September. So if there were some of the specials from last week that you really liked and that you have um, had your eye on but just haven't ordered yet um, remember that midnight tonight mountain time that ends so um, go ahead and get your order in now for the centers I just want to add um, I'm going to add some daffodil delight in here for the centers Okay, and there's our image. Now we're going to go ahead and let's um, adhere the designer series paper to the black. And if you hear um, little sounds like a pony in the background, that's my golden retriever, Bailey. He is chasing one of his toys and hopefully he's not going to start to bark at it. So if you follow me on Facebook, um, you've seen Bailey in some of my posts. Okay, so we are ready now to mount this, and it's going to mount like that. Now, a couple different things. I just want to touch this up here. A couple different ways you can mount it. You can mount this flat right on here. And you can see, I'm going to lift this up so you can see how you it matches up with the, with the image. And so you can mount it flat and just adhere it with your glue, your multi-purpose glue. Or you can raise it up with Stampin' Dimensionals and adhere it to um, a circle so that you have a... Um, some support to it. But this one I'm going to um, go ahead and we are going to cut a circle for this. So let's grab a piece of basic black, just a scrap here, and I'm going to pull in my uh, mini cut and emboss machine. And we are going to um, cut a small circle here with our um, die. And we're going to mount it that way. So we're going to bring this in here. And I'm just going, to, if you have the mini, you're using plates one and two plates uh, of number two. And you're just, we're just going to run this through. Okay. So we're going to bring this in here and I'm just going to adhere this on here. And that's almost um, going to give us the, the look of like if you do triple stamping. Except we won't have the outline of the paper. So I'm going to adhere this down. And because I'm using black, I'm going to pull in my black dimensionals. Now, I want to make sure that this lines up well. So I'm going to use this as my point. I'm also going to use this little bit, this V 
for the flowers here to line this up. And let's see, right about there. Go up a little bit. And right about there looks good. So you can see everything lines up. So let's go ahead and we're going to stick some Stampin' Dimensionals on here. And we're just going to put this down. And again, I'm going to use that to line myself up. Right there. Not quite. Find yourself your, um, like, point to, uh, that kind of gives you the mark. And there we go. Our petals are all lined up. So there's that. Now let's go ahead and we're going to do uh, put our greeting on. So I'm going to go ahead here and we are going to... I lost it here for a minute. We're going to do happy birthday. So let's go ahead and here we go. Or best wishes, I'm sorry. So we're going to go ahead and what I'm going to do with this is I am going to bring in one of my punches. And we are going to use the lovely Labels Pick a Punch. And I did go ahead and emboss this ahead of time. I used white embossing folder, especially since I was going to try to do three cards with you. I did not um, want to, um, I didn't want us to be here all night long. So I'm just going to slide this in and press down. And make sure it's fit in the middle and press down. And there's our label. So we're going to go ahead and pop this up. And let's just go with here. So here's our first card. And we're going to adhere this onto here. That's and here we go. So here's the first one. Very easy, very um, simple, not anything extra. Now I'm going to show you how to do the same one, but dress it up a little bit. And the coloring is done, so you don't have to worry about that. So let's set this one off to the side, and we're going to bring in our next one. So with that one, let's grab our pieces and parts here. And I'm going to go ahead, and we're starting off with the same card. So again, eight and a half by five and a half, so scored it four and a quarter. And we're going to go ahead and adhere. Why does that look too big? Oh, because it has the black. My goodness, Kathy. You can tell I've not done this for a week, can't you? So let's go ahead and um, adhere this down. So we're going to put our black cardstock down first, and then we'll adhere our designer series paper. So again, this is four by five and a quarter. 
And I use the multi-purpose glue because it really allows me to slide if I need to. Now for this one, I went ahead and I colored it already to save some time. So with this one though, we're gonna give it, um, we're gonna outline it. So I wanna bring a little bit more, um, I guess, dimension to it. I also want to give it a little bit of texture and um, really pull that spotlight um, into view. So with this, we're going to go ahead and adhere this. And this is going to go, if you can see, again, we're going to match up. I'm going to use my leaves and my stem here. And this is going to go right up in here. Okay, so let's adhere that down. And let's get that lined up again. There we go. Okay, now let's see what we can do to bring that focal point in. We're going to cut a ring out of black using the stylus shapes dies. So this is the second largest die and this is the largest and we're gonna put them together to actually make a frame. So I'm gonna bring my um, embossing, cut and emboss machine back in. And we're going to go ahead and um, run this through the emboss machine. So I'm just going to set this down and then I'm going to, uh, you can see it's right about the right size. And I'm just going to set that in the center, and I want it to be as even around as possible. So that looks pretty good. And we're going to run this through. We are done with that cut and emboss machine for tonight. So when you bring it out, you're going to have a circle that you can use later on for something else. And then you have your frame. So what I'm going to do is put glue and just adhere this frame around my spotlighted area. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so there's our front, and um, with our inside, we're going to go ahead, and it is uh, stamped already for a sentiment. Again, um, just because I was trying to save us a little bit of time. Slide that over just a bit. You can tell I've done a lot of stamping the last two days because my hands are covered in ink. Now I'm going to come back in with my uh, rose and I'm going to stamp it in the corner, which I should have done ahead of time, but I didn't. So thank goodness my background is black, so it's not really going to show up. And we're just going to come in on the corner just to get an outline. Isn't that pretty? I love the way that looks. And then um, you can see why I'm using the black as a base because it's really 
the vanilla is um, not as thick as our thick white, and I just think it gives the card a little bit more stability. Now, I thought this made a really pretty wedding card, um, but this one is going to be a, a happy birthday. So let's go ahead and we're going to stamp. I have my um, greeting cut out. My, and we're going to stamp happy birthday on here. Now all the greetings I'm using are from um, the stamp set, the Cottage Rose stamp set. Oops, backwards. And I'm going to pull this down just a little bit so I don't get my head in the camera. Oh, too high. Let's turn it over and try that again. All right. All right, and then I have another piece. This is a half inch. This is three quarters. I, I just want this to um, be framed by the black. So we're going to go ahead and just um, adhere this to that. Okay, and now we're going to pop this up with some black Stampin' Dimensionals. Oops. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd love it if you'd give me a thumbs up and help me grow my channel. And feel free to share it. That also helps the ch my channel to grow. Um, and we're just going to go in. What I wanted is the uh, cream color to kind of be even with the designer series paper. So we're going to go in like that. And then we're going to add a little bit of um, bling or some gems to it. So I chose to use the classic matte dots. These come in um, the white, the very vanilla, gray, and black, and not one that I often use. So um, I actually like them a lot. And I'm just going to put one here. And I'm using my pick tool and on the putty end. And if you just grab it and slide and pull up, um, that comes up really easy. And then let's put one here. So here's our second card. So this one looks different in that it has the ring around it. Um, here's the other one. Now let's do a third. And the third one is going to be different. So we are going to be using for our third one we're going to stay with the very vanilla, but we're going to um, use soft suede for our background. And our paper is um, the same designer series, but in soft suede. So with this, we're going to do um, a technique um, the spotlighting technique, but we're going to cut our paper and then color that area. And I'll show you another one when we're done. So again, same measurements. Let's go ahead. And then we're going to um, adhere this. And that'll be our inside. Now, here's our paper. When you do this technique, 
I really like to have more to color. And when I did this one yesterday, um, I had left the background white and I wasn't really happy with it. I wanted more color. So I went in with Sahara sand and I colored in the background. And once I did that, I liked it much better. So we're going to see how this works today. So in cutting this paper, I tried to pick out the biggest images I could as far as coloring. So this is four by five and a quarter, and this is three and three quarters by five. So let's go ahead and I'm going to bring in my trimmer and I'm going to show you how we do this. Very easy to do, and hopefully you can see that. Um, I'm going to raise you up just a little bit so that you can see what I'm doing. I don't mean to make you dizzy, and I will drop it down afterwards. So with this piece of um, designer paper, um, what I did and what was easiest for me so that I felt like I had an um, even edge on both sides, is you're going to cut from the left corner down towards the, to the side of the right bottom. And then you're going to do the same from this corner over to the side here. Because I want them even, now you can eyeball this, but what I did is I took a little ruler and I marked it at one and a quarter inches. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to turn it around and again measure from this corner one and a quarter inches. So hopefully you can see the two little tick marks there. And then I'm going to take my corner and I'm going to line it up in the um, track of my um, where my cutting blade goes, and the tick mark is also going to be in the track. So once you have them lined up, you're going to go ahead and cut. And here's one portion. And then you're going to line that corner back up in the track. And you're going to bring your tick mark right into the track also. Whoops. And you're going to cut there. So let's move this out of the way and I'll show you what we have. So when we go to put this back together, this is your center. And it's um, matted on this soft suede. So you're going to have soft suede um, in between so that it looks like you have um, matting underneath. You'll have like the soft suede showing between the pieces. And then this one will be here. And you can see how they match up. This is going to be the part we're going to color. So I am going to go ahead and do that, but I'm going to do it pretty quickly. Um, and we're just going to go ahead and uh, start. So hopefully you'll stay with me through to the end. I know this is a little bit longer than I usually do and that you're used to watching me. Um, but I wanted to show you all three ways that you can do this spotlighting technique and um, with your designer series paper when you have um, large patterns like this. They're great for doing this and for coloring. Like I said, I am gonna, I won't take too long in doing this, but I still want it to look nice. And it does look really pretty when it's done. Okay, there's 
that. And I'm going to come in just a little bit and add a little bit more color in here. Just to be able to pick that up. Okay. Now let's come in with our Calypso Coral. Um, if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator um, and you're in the United States and you'd like a catalog, um, please go over to the right lower corner on my YouTube banner and click on the link to Simply Cards by Kathy and um, email me your name and address and I'll be happy to put a catalog in the mail for you. I love to color. To me, it's very relaxing. Uh, to some people, I know it isn't. But um, I think it gives you an opportunity to see what you're able to do and really design how you want your own, I guess, masterpiece to look. Okay, I'm going to come in here. Um, just a reminder also, um, the perfect partners is ending on Friday, is the 30th. And um, the Perfect Partners is where Stampin' Up! designed uh, six dies um, to go along with stamp sets that were in the annual catalog that did not have matching dies to them. And those are, were available September 1st through um, the 30th. And that's going to end on Friday. So if you um, we're thinking about ordering the, the piggies or um, any of those that have that they came out with. Um, that's going to end, so uh, don't miss out on that. When I told you I tend not to go right to the edge, hopefully you can see where I kind of go up along it, but not right next to it, and the ink does spread out. Okay, let's keep going here. We're almost done. And let's go on up here. Those are all leaves, so that makes it easy for coloring. Okay, then I just want to come back with my um, dark old olive and just add a little bit of let 
let's come back in just to blend it out. Okay, I'm going to quit with that. So now we're going to put this together. So you're going to have about an eighth of an inch all the way around. So I'm going to start by adhering this down. Or even our center down. We can start with that. So I'm going to go ahead and use the multi-purpose glue because, again, it allows me to slide. And this is going to come right up. And I'm not going to press down because I want to make sure. And it's this one. No, it isn't. Sorry about that. It's this one. And you can see the leaf lines up there. And then I'm just going to see where this goes. Because I do want some brown in between them. So I think we're good. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere this down. And now let's add the glue here. And you want to make sure these um, kind of line up the outline of the images. But you still want to have some of the um, soft suede showing in between. Okay, and our last one. Now, I'm not going to do the inside of this card because you've kind of stuck with me throughout this for a long time. Um, and it's not going to be any different than the ones that um, we did. Um, but I really wanted to show you this technique. So here's our spotlight for this one. And with this, I thought I'd go with... Um, feel better and um, maybe put that up in here. Now, if you don't like that lighter background, you could go in with, um, let me bring in the one I did. You could go in and color it um, and give it a little bit more depth and dimension, which I really liked. But um, it's all going to be up to you and what appeals to you. So let's take a look at our cards. I'm going to bring them all back in. So here's the one where we um, did like a V spotlight. Here's the ones with where we did um, the frame around them. This is one where we just popped up the circle and you didn't do a frame, but it's raised up. So three different ways you can do them. And then here was another one I did. Um, I said I was going to show you using a different paper where this is from the same designer series paper. But I when I cut the V, I just simply colored the um, tulips in the center of that and um, went ahead and adhered it down. So three different ways to do the spotlight technique. Each one looks a little bit different. I really hope you enjoyed tonight's video. I know it's longer than I usually do, but I was really excited to show you the different ways you can do this with designer series paper. And I will be back on Friday where we will do some alternate projects with this month's paper pumpkin. I hope that you'll join me and um, have a good evening. Stay safe and see you soon.